your word comes to give us life, to give us strength, to give us direction. Uh, we thank you for your Holy Spirit comforting us, leading us, guiding us into all your truth, God. We thank you for unveiling your promises to us. We pray, God, that your word will fall upon good ground, that your people would have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying unto the church. And we just thank you and we just magnify you for being such an awesome God to us, supplying all of our need according to your riches and glory. Amen. We ask, Father, that your favor would be in this place among us, God. We just ask, God, for direction and light and revelation like never before, God, that we are ordered, God. Our footsteps are ordered, God, by your word. And we thank you for just being privileged, God, to be recipients, Lord, for being children of God. What is man that thou art mindful of us? And the son of man that you visit us, God. We thank you so much, God. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. So we're going to begin with just a recap of our first three weeks of the month of August. And um, Dr. Shelley, she mentioned in the first week about God's deliverance and how that his word that is over us, it does not always, always look uh, good. When God says something to us, sometimes it seems like maybe God um, lied or, or God, are you talking to me? Like like Gideon said, uh, mighty man of valor, who, who are you referring to? Sometimes God's deliverance and the way that he brings us out. It doesn't always appear the way that God heals us and directs us. It doesn't always appear that um, that it's, you know, that we are truly aligned, okay, because his ways are not our ways. Um, you know, his thoughts are not our thoughts. They're higher than ours. She talked about the dry bones and the grasshoppers and how when God says that you are able, but your circumstance will say, well, maybe I'm not able. I see myself as not able to do what God said that I can do. And then I talked about in week number two, the identity crisis, how that uh, many of us have gone through shifts and turns and situations and circumstances has caused us to have this crisis. But God would use those things to direct us and turn us so that the crisis, the turning point will align us with with him and how that when when you know who God is, when he reveals himself to you in any capacity, then that's a part that belongs to you and it unveils a part of who you are. Okay, because as a child of God, you begin to glean from the identity of your father. So when you begin to realize and recognize my dad is this, then it would unfold who you are because you get the traits directly from him. And then Prophet Alexander, she talked about tapping into prophetic prayer and how that we are not to be um, limited or distracted by earthly situations that always arise to come and try to divert the plan and the path of God, things to try to trick us out of the will of God, things that would try to capture our heart so much so to make us think that all our life is about is some natural resource and make some circumstance become so big in our eyes that we miss out on the promise, just like they missed, they were looking at the giants and not seeing the promised word that God says that the land was yours despite the giants. Yes. Okay. And so today, and I believe that the Lord is ordering our footsteps. I believe that the Lord is speaking to us in, um, you know, in the various outlets from Sunday school to uh, morning service to Wednesday word study. I believe that the Lord is directing us. And, and that's, that's a great and awesome thing uh, just for God to have us on his mind yes. and to speak words to direct our path. That's an awesome privilege. Yes. Is it not? Amen. So today we're going to talk about manifesting your light, manifesting your light. And if you're taking notes, I have a lot of uh, scriptures. I may or may not read like all of them, um, but I would urge us to to um, even because sometimes when God does um, direct our path and pull us into a certain um, under a certain umbrella, he, you know, God directs his church and he pulls people together for a certain uh, purpose and a certain work and there's some some problems that you have that the other your neighbor your brother your sister has the answer to because it's a body of Christ so some of the prayers that we have some of the things that we need from God that might seem like they're blocked up God could have released it to somebody else to give to you so these words are very very important for the, the collective body 
And that's why I would urge us not to just take it lightly. And you know, if we want to jot down some notes, that would be that would be great. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we'll start with uh, Matthew 16, Matthew 16 and 13, where um, where Jesus asked his disciples. Again, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago where Jesus asked his disciples, well, who do men say that I am? And they said, well, some say you're Elijah, some say Jeremiah, some say John the Baptist. They were all mentioned in these prophetic figures, but the Lord, the Father, had unlocked a revelation to Peter. Mm -hmm. When Jesus then say, well, okay, I've heard what the people say that I am. What, you know, looking after the flesh, you're some prophetic figure. But who do you, the church, say that I am? Who do who does my followers know me to be? And he says that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He's saying that you are the Messiah. You are the one that comes to destroy the works of the devil. And he said, he said, Jesus said unto him, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but the father in heaven. So flesh cannot reveal to us who God is. OK, so the father, the father had. Um, took it upon himself to open up, to reveal, to unveil, and to manifest, okay, a relationship of who Jesus actually was in their lives, in his life. And because of that revelation of knowing God, see, God favors us, and, and I mean, none of us are worthy of his presence, but God has rent a veil to give us access to knowing him. And then in knowing our father, then we begin to know what our purpose is as being children of God from our father. So then he said to Peter, he says, he says, yes, and you are, you are Peter. He said his name was Simon, but he said, but you are Peter. He was surnamed Peter. His name was changed, which meant a rock. Okay. So he called him a rock. Now, the Bible says that the secret things, they belong unto God, right? Deuteronomy 29 and 29. I'll read it. It says, Deuteronomy 29 and 29. It says that the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of the law. Now listen at that. He said that there are some things, the secret things, they belong to God. But the things that God decides to unveil, to reveal, to shed light upon, they not only belong to you, but they belong to your children. So what I'm saying is there's some things that God can give you, some revelation, some light coming on, some direction, some impartation, some experience and encounter with God that's not only going to bless you, but it's going to bless your children. OK, see, we like we can talk about the experiences like in the white building and all the things that they may have never seen that. But God is a generational God that he makes a covenant with his people. And the blessing that he has upon you is not just for you. It's for somebody else that's attached to you. Amen. He said that the things he revealed, they belong to you now. God has took it upon himself, decided to share some things with you to open up some things to you and they not only belong to you but they belong to your children forever that you may do what it is that god says that he wanted for you to do mm -hmm. amen yeah. he's a generational god he's the god of abraham isaac and jacob not just the god of one person mm -hmm. okay not just the god of uh some some favorite Okay, God has released some stuff in here to our, our kingdom parents in this building. He's released some stuff, some revelation he gave to them way back. That experience and that encounter that, that we hear about when God raised the, the baby from the dead in the hospital room and she got up saying, I want some ice cream. That is something to help the children and the children's children. 
Because that is an impartation. There's some things that God does for us that they will never, we may never see them on that fashion again. There's some unique encounters that we experience with God where he allows us, he allows a veil to be torn down and takes us into a secret place. And that is an experience that belongs to us that can never be taken from us. Yeah. But it's something that we can use in our arsenal to go later down the road and help somebody else. Man. I know God to be a healer. I know God to be a way maker. I know God to be a deliverer because he did it for me. And he did it in such a unique fashion that it was for me, but it wasn't just for me. It was, you know, he met my right now uh, need. He was a very present help in the time of my trouble, but he did it for me so that he can do it for somebody else. He was developing David in the place where showing him that I can give you power over a lion and a bear because he knew that later on you're going to come back and you're going to hold up for the armies of God, the children of Israel. You're going to be able to protect them. Amen. Amen. So he says he revealed unto Peter. He said, OK, yes, the father can only reveal. But now he told him, Peter, you are somebody you are. You are Peter. His name was Simon. But now he real Simon and gave him direction and told him you are a rock. Now, what is that about? What is that about? Jesus is the rock. Jesus is, uh, he's the chief cornerstone. Let's look at, I'll, I'll turn to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 3 and 11. It says, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, but then if we look in Ephesians, 2 and 20, it says that, and, our, and we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, he said that, uh, Peter, you are a rock, all right? But he's saying that the, the, the foundation is built upon the apostles and the prophets, which Peter was one of, but then Jesus said, I am the rock, I'm the chief cornerstone. So I'm trying to show you the parallel, the identity that he got. He tapped into the foundation, knowing who he was. So therefore, uh, the unveiling of who he was came about. It manifests. And for those that are just coming in, we're talking about manifesting light, manifesting our light. We all have a light. We all have something to bring to the table. And, and I believe that God has set up some some great lights in this place. Man. I, when I begin to think about it, I said nobody goes deep in revelation like, uh, like we do. Nobody yeah. goes deep into prayer like we do. I'm not saying nobody yeah. like nobody else in the yeah. body of Christ like to get prideful. But for us to have a sense of esteem in knowing that we're not grasshoppers because there's a depth of word. There's a depth of presence. There's a depth of worship. There's a depth of prayer. There's a depth of direction. There's a depth of deliverance. There's a depth of everything that God said belonged to us. Everything we've seen, it belongs to us, whether we're seeing it today or not. The things that happened on yesterday, the things that happened over there, those things belong to us. They belong to us. For us and for our children and our children's children, it said forever. That's something that cannot be taken away. Mm -hmm. A spiritual experience is spiritual. It is, it is infinite. It's everlasting. It never ends. Just because you don't see it, you know, it wasn't something for you to see. Man. To bottle up, you know, like a, a, you know, genie bottle. It was a spiritual thing. But whether you see it today or not, it still exists. And it's still there to be unlocked and unleashed and unveiled to anybody that comes in this place afterwards. Mm -hmm. There were times in which we said that you know, experiences where people come in and unclean spirits begin to cry out. Well, if one comes in today, guess what? He's that same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That that revelation that we have that God is a deliverer, he's the same deliverer today. Amen. So that belongs to us. That's something that's your possession. Amen? Amen. 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 So the Bible says that now there's no foundation that can be laid except for Christ but then it says that he's building upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets so I'm showing us the oneness in the spirit 
the oneness in the spirit that, you know, when he spoke to Peter, you are a rock. Now, I'm the rock, but you are a rock. You are an extension of me, and you're going to carry out my will when I'm gone. Okay, so it's like Genesis 1 and 26 says that uh, we are created in the image and after the likeness of God. We're supposed to have some traits of our parents. Man. We may not have all of them. We may not be a carbon copy, you know, but you got that nose from somebody. <laughs> you know, you got them. Let me stop. <laughs> I'm about to start talking crazy. <laughs> you pigeon toes from somebody, you know. Forgive me, Lord. All right. <laughs> but we got DNA from somewhere and we're supposed to be made in the image and after the likeness of God okay so uh, God spoke to Peter although God spoke to Peter and said you are a rock a rock is that represents foundation is solid he said I'm giving you keys to a kingdom I'm giving you some authority and simply because I've decided to reveal who I am to you and I've revealed, uh, begin to reveal who you are to you. So I have established you. Now, although God can say that there's something does exist, that doesn't mean that it's fully manifested immediately. It does exist. There are diamonds and things down in caves that exist that have not been ex excavated. Yes, yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. there, there are things that exist that have yet to be plowed out. Amen. So Peter was a rock when Jesus said that's who he is because it's like the Jeremiah 1 and 5 that before I formed you already knew you. So before you stepped into it, it already existed as such. Okay. And that's the thing that challenges us to change, to grow up and to amount up to what God says is because God will say something to you and you're looking at something like, oh, God, you sure about that? You're mighty. Yes. And he says it to you in your state of weakness because he's not talking physical strength. Yes. He's yes. not talking physical health, physical ability, physical riches, physical power, and physical prowess. He's not speaking that. He's speaking on a higher dimension. He's speaking spiritual, not physical, which is why the natural eye cannot perceive or understand when God says something. When God says you're great, he's not saying you're great based on a circumstance. He's saying you exist as that. Yes. You see, the sun is still the sun or the moon is still the moon. There's times at night where you don't see the moon. It didn't disappear. It still is the moon, whether you see it or not. If there's clouds in front of the sun, the sun still exists whether you see it or not. Mm -hmm. So some things that are not manifest, they are. But when we, when we embrace that they are, then maybe it will give them the ability to manifest. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So he said to Peter, you are a rock. But then here it was that Peter, Peter wasn't quite walking uh, up to that standard of what Jesus said yet because he denied the Lord himself. Said, I'm not me. I'm, I'm going to be right there with you, Lord. And acted as if he didn't even know the Lord Man. when he was in the fire. So he says, but after you are converted, you can go back and strengthen your brethren. Amen. So there are some things that God has spoken over you that he says that, but the devil has desired to have you. Mm -hmm. The devil has decided to take you out and try to make it as if God is, has spoken a lie. In your life. I'm telling you, I've been there. You've yeah. been there the way you like God. You said you would never leave me or forsake me. Well, I don't, I don't know. Look like you ain't never going to be with me. <laughs> Look like you're never there. Mm -hmm. But he is. Man. So, Peter, after you are converted, now, I already said you're a rock, but then later on down the line, after you have converted, after you've been converted, you can go and strengthen your brother mm -hmm. because the revelation of who God was to Peter, it wasn't just for Peter. 
And when God unveiled to him who he was, a rock, it wasn't just for him. It was for foundation to be laid that can be built upon for people to come. Mm -hmm. The things that he reveals to you, it belongs to you, mm -hmm. but it also belongs to your children's children mm -hmm. forever so that you can fulfill the promises, so that you can fulfill all the words of the law, mm -hmm. that you can fulfill all the things that are in the book that was spoken, that you can fulfill all the prophecies that was spoken in this place. It's for you and it's for your children's children. So we have to believe what God says despite how it may look. Amen? Because it's the word of God that endures forever. Circumstances gonna change. They gonna come and they gonna go. God saying you are the head and not the tail is not contingent on whether you got the raise or got fired. You're still the head whether it appears as such or not. Amen? Amen. Some things you are, it just has not manifest. Okay, so in 1 Corinthians 12 and 7, it says in the King James that the, the manifestation, that's the revealing, that's the unfolding, that's the, the light being shed upon, the manifestation of the Spirit of God. He talked about all the different diversities of gifts, but he says that the, it's for a collective body, a collective unit that like even on a basketball team, you got a point guard, you got a, a forward, you got different people that have different operations. OK, but he says that the manifestation, what I reveal to one person, it says it's the prophet. It says with all. Uh -huh. OK. And so when I looked up that word like with all sounds like this, like the prophet all. But the, the definition was like for the common good, the manifestation, the revelation, the unveiling of the spirit. If God gives you an encounter with God and take you up into heaven somewhere, he's giving you that not just for you. He's giving you that for an impartation, an encounter, a revelation, a manifestation of his spirit. Not for you to say, I got something nobody else got. No, I got something I can bring back to the camp that because he decided to give it to me, now I can give it to you. But then later there's some things that he decides to give to you that you can give to me. So therefore it's working together for the common good, okay? And when I thought about the common good, I thought about eminent domain, okay? Uh, eminent domain is like if your government, or say if you like your local government, they decide, well, I think a, a good recreational park will be for the betterment of the whole community. But you have a house that's sitting right in the middle of where they have deemed is the greater good for the whole community. You have a house sitting right there. And what they're going to do is buy you out, give you some money, knock your house down, not care about your feelings and your the sentimental value that I grew up in this house, and this was grandma's house. They don't care about that because they have deemed for the common good, the greater good, okay, that this is something that's going to be beneficial to all so I can knock down your house so that I can benefit some more people. So there's some, some of us that have gone through some challenges, some scrapes, some scuffles, some bondage, some darkness, just like men of God and women of God in scripture have gone through some hardships, some hard times for the greater good, the greater common good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Some of us have had our houses knocked down, you know, symbolically, our world shaken, you know, our foundation seems to crumble beneath us, our well dried up, but it's for the common good. Is so that out of that, he's going to give you a revelation. Yeah. Out of Hannah's cry of despair and desperation, she's going to tap into the Father. And when she taps into the Father, he's going to unveil something to her, a Samuel that's going to come and be a blessing to a nation. Man. Amen. So it's not personal. It's not personal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes his light being shined upon us is it could come through demolition. It can come through, man, it looks bad. You know, some of us can testify, those that um, that lead or, or not, 
um, that when you know when you're in the fire, like your worship changes. When you're in the fire, your prayer, your pursuit after God, the urgency of pressing into God right now it changes. And you know the outsider looks at it and say, "Man, they on fire for the Lord." Now they on fire. <laughs> they on fire, and they need the Lord. You know, yeah. but but they're able to spread that fire to you because of you know what they may be going through. Amen. After you're converted, strengthen your 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 brother. Amen. Amen. So Romans eight. Eight and nineteen. It says something about the creation, the creatures um, yearning in earnest expectation, um, waiting for the manifestation. Uh, there's a dying world. There are communities that all sorts of things are happening. There's schools and schools and retail and neighborhoods and individual households. There's like so much, so much as, um, as Isaiah said about the gross darkness. And there are people waiting on a manifestation. And we never know who, where God might plant us and who he may plant us um, next to that could be going through some serious, serious grave circumstances. And we never know the, the value of our light shining. Mm -hmm. And it's just by doing what we're supposed to do. Seeking God. Walking with God. We never know the power of an impact that we can have on someone from our light manifesting. Mm -hmm. And we think it's got to be some big old elaborate thing. You know, God shining his light upon you. And like, unless, unless your job is in a church... Usually, like, like I'm not going at, at the school, I'm not going to jump up on the cafeteria table and say I got a word. <laughs> That's not how the light is going to be shown. We're not going to have no prayer lines. I'm just about to go about my daily, do what I do, and there's something that somebody can see, you know, mm -hmm. how you responded to something, how you uh, react to something, you know, how you endure, how you're still making it. You know, when others fall off, you know, your light can shine. Okay, so he says in Romans 8 and 19, the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Waiting for the sons of God uh, to, to be revealed, for us to come to the light, for us to manifest. Amen. Amen. And then he says in verse 23, not just the creation. It says, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Okay, so even in us, there's a groaning and a yearning, okay, for, for God, okay, for the manifestation of God. And then it's talking about like a translation into more of a spiritual state, maybe after we've been delivered from this decayed body upon the earth, you know, being translated, translated into the kingdom of God. But guess what? Before something manifests, remember, it already is. When God says, let there be, it already exists. There are things that we are discovering and tapping into. You know, anything that man makes He's making something that God has already made. He's discovering something. How can you discover America that was already there? You know, you found out about it. But you didn't say, let there be, and it, and it became. It already was. Amen? Amen? So I'm saying, when I say manifest the light, I'm saying you already are the sons of God. You already are the children of God. You already exude the glory of God. The, the, the glory of God is already shining on your face. The power of God is already uh, overtaking you. The spirit of God is already stirring up in your belly. Okay? The prophecy that's going to come out of your belly, the rivers of living water, they are already there. They just have to be stirred up. 
And sometimes we have to ignite that fire on the inside of each other. And we are all important. Some of us that may feel that we are the least, we are of significance. Yes. Yes. We are of significance. You pull a little bitty spark plug out of an engine and see what the engine does. Will it run? Now, if you got a bunch of them, you can pull some out, it's not going to run right. Mm -hmm. Go get your lawnmower, it's got one. Mm -hmm. Pull it out and see will it run. That's a little bitty thing. I thought the engine was important. Mm -hmm. The little spark plug was too. Mm -hmm. Or is too. Okay. So 1 John, 1 John 3 and 1, it says, um, it validates what I've been saying. He says that now are you. 1 John 3 and 1. Beloved, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Mm. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now it says the world didn't accept him. It wasn't manifest when Jesus was walking as the carpenter's son that who he truly was. That's why it was a supernatural revelation that Peter can say, no, it's bigger than that. Now that the carpenter has put down his, his hammer and nails, some people say he was a, a mason, another story. All right, but you put down your natural tools and you begin to step and walk into your destiny, still there was the perception, oh yeah, the prophet, we've seen y'all before, another Elijah. Another Jeremiah. No, but there was a revelation, an unfolding, a manifestation, a light coming on to Peter that you're something bigger than that. You're something greater than that. They didn't accept him, and so that's why they won't receive you. But now we're not here to get worldly recognition. Amen. Okay, Amen. but we, we do need to know, and because I've said this before, that before you can, you need to know, the more you know the will of God or who you are, the more likely you are to walk in it. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who you are, then you'll settle for anything. Mm -hmm. and you won't even go in the direction that you're supposed to go in because you haven't tapped into the knowledge of who you are. And to tap into the knowledge of who you are, you have to tap into your source. You have to tap into the one that said, let there be. You have to tap into your maker. You have to tap into your creator. As I said in uh, Isaiah first chapter, the, the ox knoweth their master. The donkey knoweth his master. And But my people, they don't know, they don't consider, they don't discern. When you know who God is, he is gonna reveal your purpose. You can't walk with God and not get some purpose on you. You can't be in the vicinity of God and nothing ever happens or no direction ever comes. He is light. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to be with him and be in darkness. Amen. It may seem unclear, you know, but we have to believe what God has said. Amen? Amen. 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 We're getting there. Any comments, questions before we go? Before we yeah. move on? Jesus said that I am the light of the world. Okay? But then he also told his children that you are the light of the world. Because you're one with me. Just as I'm one with the Father. You come from the same source. So in the beginning, I said, exist this way. And it existed that way. You are the light of the world also. We have been given the charge and the responsibility as children of God to walk in the things that Jesus walked in right. and his first church walked in because we have the same spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead <clears throat> resides in us. The same power, the same spirit of God that, that was in operation 
that we can see clearly in the book of Acts, mm. the miraculous, great, and mighty works of God we have. And I don't care if you feel like it or not, you have it. Amen. Now are we the sons of God, but it might not yet appear what we shall be. You know, now again, I believe it was more or less referring to that glorious body, you know, that absent in the body and present with the Lord. But he's speaking on that spiritual essence that it don't just start then. Your spirit and your new uh, who you are, it don't just start because this body uh, goes into the ground, mm -hmm. you know. It was before before you were formed. It wasn't the body in the first place. It was a spirit. It was the spirit in the man. The spirit of a man, the Bible says, is the candle of the Lord. There's a light on the inside of you. God says, let there be. Do we not know that? And we're talking about, again, manifesting light. The first word that God spoke, he said in the beginning, there was darkness. Point of, you know, the earth was, in the beginning, God created Heaven and earth, uh, earth was void, darkness covered the face of the earth. And the first thing that God says is let there be. He said, let there be light. That was the very first thing he spoke. And just as Jesus said he came to his own, um, the light came to darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Even in the natural mind, it's very hard to comprehend the essence of light. Scientists try their best, but it's hard to explain the essence of light. How does it exist? How does it move? It's so fast, it's like the quickest thing that is known, but really not known to man. Nothing, it doesn't have mass. It's not like tangible matter. So therefore, it's impossible for anything to move at the speed of light because it would have to not have mass. Because, and I thought about it, I was trying to, I kind of veered away, I'm just kind of giving you a little bit of what I was starting to study about, but that, you know, I, it was just too, too much because it's, because it's spiritual. It's greater than your understanding. You know, the speed of light is like, um, it says, in the blink of an eye, the speed of light can wrap around the globe seven times. Hmm. Really? That's like fast. And so you would have to not have matter because, and I thought about like me being in this, in this church, in the sanctuary, if I was operating at the speed of light <laughs> and I was going around this room, I then, I couldn't have mass because by the time I got over there, I was really still over here. By the time I go, got over there, I was really over there. And it was just, you know, just, <laughs> just a thought. Just a thought. But this is, the, this is the point, okay, in that, is that light, okay, we think of light in terms of the lights on, the natural light outside, the lights at night, which is the moon and the stars, the sun. But when God says, let there be light, have we ever thought about it? He said that before he created the sun. So he wasn't talking about, he wasn't talking about, he called, he called the light, he separated the light from the day from the night, the light from the darkness. He says, let there be light, but that was before the natural source of the sun. He says, let there be. And then, because see, in our understanding, we know naturally, and let me show you, because the laws of nature, they are the laws of nature. There's some things scientists can't explain, okay, and there's some things they cannot Okay, so uh, we know that for a plant to grow, what does it need? Light. Light. It needs light, like soil, water. Okay, so those are things, natural things that it's got to have. But guess what? The Bible says he made the vegetation before the sun. I believe. That's all. Scratch that from the table. Did he say, I believe he said he made Yes. Yes, in verse 11 of Genesis, he says, let the earth bring forth grass, vegetation. Then he goes down further 
And then he said, so basically the earth was operating off what God said. It was operating off of a spiritual premise. Let there be light before the sun. Amen. And then he says that he says it was just a mass. And he says that he commanded the waters to come into one spot so that the earth then appeared. But he created in verse one, the heavens and the earth, the heaven and the earth. So he already had created earth before earth was manifest. All right. So he peeled back the water so that the earth was manifest. And that's my point again, is when something that's manifest, it already is. It already existed. You just haven't seen it yet. We just haven't seen it yet. But when he uncovers any secret, it belongs not only to us, but it belongs to our children forever to help us do all the words of this law. Amen. All right. So in John uh, 1 and 4, we're getting there. John 1 and 4, he talked about receiving and believing. Let me look at it. John 1 and 4. He said, and it was life, and that life was the light of men. Okay, John 1 and 12, he says, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So you have some power and some authority as a son of God. All you have to do is believe and receive him. You have some power. Amen? Amen. Power beyond our imagination. Okay? So he says in 1 John, he talks about that if, you know, we walk with God, God is light. Then it says that we can't walk in darkness and we have to have fellowship with one another. We have to have fellowship with one another. Because if we're connected to the same source, we can't separate ourselves even if we want to. Light is light. Even where there seems like it's the darkest night, light still exists. There's still particles of light that's just because it's, it's not about mass. It's more spiritual, supernatural than can be explained. Amen. Amen. So what God does in one, he affects multitudes that is beyond our comprehension. The promise that God gave to Abraham about the, bless, the blessedness of his seed. And he, you know, Abraham did not know Messiah would come through that lineage. Yeah. So he thought, man, God just gonna give me a whole bunch of children <laughs> in my young age. Or he's gonna spread the 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 name, you know. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna have a big seed, big old family. No, but it was bigger than that. And he never saw it. But but it was something that God allowed him. To partake of he revealed himself to him but it was for somebody else too it belonged to him but it also belonged to his children okay when he revealed himself to Moses in light in a burning bush he revealed himself to him as I am because now I'm about to show Israel who I am that I am that it doesn't matter what you're up against I still am All right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, if your well seems to be dry, I am. It doesn't matter. Amen. Okay? So let's look at, um, and we're winding down. Acts 27, uh, 26. Book of Acts. I hope this is making a little bit of sense. It is. And I thought about last week how our Bishop said, and it's so true, he said that, there are things that you can say in two minutes that, you know, it take, you take an hour. And I thought about actually probably Ms. Alexander because at the beginning of her message, her Sunday school message uh, last week, you said something and it sounded to me like it was the benediction, but it was like within the first minute or two of you speaking, I was like, okay, I got it, I got it, you know? And if we really got it, you know, we can move on. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we don't have it. A lot of what we hear is we're hearing it Time. We done heard it a thousand times, but 
you know, God deemed it necessary to put it back on our plate. Uh -huh. Eat it again. Mm -hmm. Go eat them vegetables. Huh. All right, so Acts 26 and 15, it says, and, and I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, whom thou art persecuting. This was uh, Paul giving his testimony of his conversion from being Saul when he had that encounter with the Lord. And he said, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of the things which thou hast seen and of the things which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send you. He said, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which is sanctified by faith that is in me. Okay, so he said that he had that light to shine. He gave, uh, he gave who was then Saul an awesome revelation, changed his name, uh, only God can reveal just like he took Simon and made him Peter because now you are about to be a rock just like me. He, he, he say, I'm going to take you out of one thing. I'm going to deliver you so that now you can go back and deliver somebody else. I've given you something and now that belongs to you. Now you can go back and strengthen your brother. You can go back and, ex and show them the expression of God that has made an everlasting, forever impression on your life. And that's something that he's going to use. He did it in you, not for you, but to bring, to send you back so you can get somebody else. All right. Like he did with Joseph. Mm -hmm. Took him into a horrible place, into a pit, and to a prison, but only to save many people alive. Uh, the manifestation of God on one man is to profit the common good of us all. And that manifestation of God, he's very present in need. He's healer, but that manifestation of God, it's an awesome thing to know that he's a healer, but it don't feel good to know that my body is sick that need to be healed. But sometimes to get that impression or that revelation of who he is, then sometimes it comes with the trouble. Sometimes it comes with the pain. If I know God to be a savior, savior is deliverer. Mm -hmm. Salvation is deliverance. So if I know that, then what did he bring me out of? That stuff he brought me out of, it might not have looked so pretty as what's on the other side of the salvation. But he did that. He allowed me to go through it. So now I can come back and tell somebody else, yes, he's a savior. Yes, he's a deliverer. Okay? So I make deliverance look pretty. But the thing that I was bound in, that didn't look so good. Mm -hmm. Okay? But he will allow me, sometimes, as I said, eminent domain, put a bulldozer on your house so that you can come back and provide shelter to other people. You know? So he says that you are the light of the world, just like Jesus said he is, because you are one with him. Okay, We are extensions of him. We are sons. We are daughters. We are children of God. So therefore, we got to have some of his DNA. You know? Yeah. We have to have something. If he got some light, we got some light. You know? Mm -hmm. So he says to let that, let that light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Again, let it shine among men. So he's giving you a light to shine for somebody else. Not to be selfish. Now, you know, like sometimes they have those, they have those Christian, so-called Christian communities that are so holy and so sanctified that they shelter themselves up and, and never uh, interact with anybody else in the world. So you're saying you don't want nobody else to be saved? You don't want, any, you don't want to share this gospel? With anybody? He gave you this for you. He gave you a light to put under a bushel and be hidden. No, we say sit it up so it can help somebody else. The manifestation of the Spirit of God in one person is the prophet with all. And just as in the Bible, the things that God has done, we're still preaching on thing encounters that people had with God. Mm -hmm. Now you may have never had the 
um, a carbon copy experience like Isaiah, you know, where the train of his glory filled the temple. But I bet you you've experienced his glory. I bet you you've been in the presence of God. I bet you you've had a unique experience yourself that is yours. Mm -hmm. It's the same, same source. Some things God does, he only does it one time. And there's some things we've experienced in God that I ain't never experienced nothing like that before. I saw something that I may never see again. But guess what? I do. I still have it because it was a spiritual experience. So I can always testify about it. I can always, that's in my arsenal to help to bring somebody else out. I, it's in my arsenal whether I even share it with them or not. It builds up my confidence. It makes me know I got a light and I can help, you know, shine upon somebody else because there's something that belonged to me that nobody can take. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Things that are revealed, they're mine and they're my children. Forever. Amen. Amen. So the light that you have is yours. It's yours forever. It's an enduring light. As long as we stay connected to God, as long as we don't walk away from the light, detach ourselves from the light, it can never go out. It might seem like it's a little, a little dim at times, but it can never go out. Never go out. That means Jesus would have to, his light would, couldn't shine. That means God's power and ability would have to diminish if ours did. Mm -hmm. So, we have to be like him and a reflection of him and not think that our circumstance is a representation of him. All right. No, we have to be, as I heard Lady Rankin, and that word, as I said, that light from Wednesday, I couldn't make it, I was dealing with some stuff. But like I said, the revelation of Adonai to her can come back and help us. I heard that word in the middle of dealing with some stuff. I was listening to it off and on because I was in the middle of dealing with some, some stuff. And later that night, I, that word, I applied it. I received it. I believed it. I said, Lord, I'm going to trust you for this situation. It was something that looked bleak, like it's, it's an end, a door is closed. And I say, Lord, this is in your hands. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trust you. Mm -hmm. And then that next day, I got a phone call out of nowhere where that situation began to, to get fixed. Mm -hmm. An unexpected phone call because I said, Lord, you are out of night and you rule. So that was a light that she had to bless her children. That was a revelation God gave to her so that she can come give it to somebody else. Amen? Amen? And now I can take that experience and say, I heard a word from God and it, and it shifted some stuff. And now I can go help somebody else. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right, last couple of scriptures. I'm going to get out of our way. Psalms 119 and 130, it says, at the entrance of your word. Okay? The entrance of your word brings Light, that's uh, entrance is revelation, manifestation. Okay? The entrance of God's word. Let me look at it. Psalm 119. I believe that's our longest um, chapter in the Bible. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. The entrance of God's word. Okay? So there's an opening. There's a gate. There's a revelation. The words that God speak, they are amazing. We have to make sure we value the words that are being spoken out of this place. Because it is for the common good of us all. Amen? Amen. He says his, his word, same chapter, 119, 105. It's a lamp to our feet and it's a light unto our path. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5 and 8, it says that once we were, it didn't say in darkness, but once we were darkness, mm -hmm. once upon a time we embodied the essence of darkness, 
but it says, now we are light in the Lord. You are the light of the world, but in the Lord. Amen. Amen. And last scripture, he talks about the revealing of his secrets uh, to his servants, the prophets. There's nothing he's going to do that's going to catch us, that's going to blindside us. He's already spoken it. He may not speak it to you directly as an individual, but he can speak it to you indirectly because you're in fellowship with other children of light. And the revelation that he gives to them is also for you. Amen? Amen. So let us believe the word of God. And the Bible says that we will be established. We believe his prophets and we will prosper. Yes. Believe the word of the Lord. Let your light shine. And that is, that's it right there in a nutshell. You accept and believe the word of God. And as, as it enters into you, it, the entrance of his word is going to bring light. Receive his word. Believe his word is going to emanate and manifest and begin to allow that light of God to be provoked and shined on the inside of you. And no matter what you're going through, when he says, let there be, there is, no matter whether you see it or not. It may not have yet appeared. It may not have yet manifest the fullness of the promises of God. Some of the things will never manifest on this earth according to our thinking. Because it's way bigger than our comprehension. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any